Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I've decided I'm going to uh, do a little bit of uh, live play. So I want to show you the um, file, the fully automatic rail layer, or automated, one or the other. And the way that works is it's a train that has this yellow tinge, uh, but the point is it's got it's got a thing that in, in it that can automatically ray rail Lay, ray, bleh, lay rail for you and various other things that go with the rail like signals and um, you can also put down power poles in fact I think it's got a um, a blueprint mode where you save a blueprint into it and it will build whatever you want around it so it could include things like turrets and belts and, and so on so you can make the, all of your defences in one go with this system if you want <clears throat> I'm using it in its pretty much its simplest possible way so I've got the train here it's ready to go in the um, wagon on the back of it. I've got a load of rails, some landfill, some cliff explosives, and I've run out of signals. Let's put some more signals in it, because otherwise it's just not going to be able, it's not going to, be able to do that, uh, do the signal laying. And I wanted to be able to do that. <laughs> um, but then once I want to, want to start it going, I just click start, and it will start laying rail, as you see. And if I move forwards now, it'll automatically lay the rail. Or to make it even easier, I can just hit the cruise button, and it will do absolutely everything for me as long as I keep it stocked up with all the stuff it needs. It destroys cliffs, it will eat through trees and rocks, it will even lay down landfill across um, across across lakes and things for me. I don't want to have... Oh, uh, the only one thing it won't do is fight off biters, but it is quick enough that that doesn't seem to matter. Now I've run out of rail signal, which is a little bit of a pain. I'll give it another, another five. Um, but it's still able to lay, lay the track and it's putting down... Oh, I've, I'm out of rails as well. Okay, I didn't plan that quite as well as I might have done. <laughs> Let's hope those biters are no longer chasing. Uh, have I got any more? I've got some more in, in my inventory, but not very many. Is that going to be enough? No, it's not. Not even slightly. Yeah. Do what I want, not what I'm saying. Right, in there. Put the rail. <laughs> and I'm going to run out again almost immediately. Okay, so that's um, a slightly abortive attempt at doing what I was trying to show you. I'm just going to have to leave the train here while I go off and gather some more supplies for it. So I'll grab that uh, locomotive, put it down here, it's basically the wrong way. Load it up, right, and then we can head back to head back to base with it. So the point of this system is that it allows you to um, to lay, as long as you plan far enough ahead to make sure you've got all of the components you need, it allows you to lay out quite a lot of track very, very quickly. There are a couple of problems, like if you run into any, um, any biter bases, then the train will just get eaten by them. Additionally, um, and, and so you have, to, you have to keep a little bit of, um, a little bit of an eye on where you're, where you're going, at least early on. I see, imagine once you've got laser defense up to maximum, you'd probably be able to just plow straight through them and, the, and, the, and it would destroy them as it goes. But I haven't got that yet. So, other things I've been doing. I've also been laying out these roads around the base. Now, there's, there's a couple of reasons for these. Let's turn that off and that off. There we go. You can see better now. These, these, con these uh, brick roads. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for these. One is that you move a bit faster, certainly when you're running on them, and I think when you're driving on them too. So, you can, so it allows you to get around a bit quicker. And it's also, it also tells me areas that I've deliberately gone through and clear, at least cleared out to some extent. They're not 100% perfectly clear, where, but I've driven through the forest uh, quite a few times. That's taken out the trees. If, whenever I hit a rock, I'll, I'll dig it up. And so they're mostly safe to drive along at full speed. I've even put gates in across the walls for them. And that, so as I say, that allows you to get around a bit faster because you can you can travel faster when you're on the roads. And also, it tells you where you, where it's safe to go as well. So so yeah, I'm, I'm building up a, gradually building up a network of these for uh, for getting around with. I probably won't build them all the way out over here because I think any time I'm going to go out this far I should probably go by train because it'll be a lot quicker. So, you may wonder why I've decided to suddenly build this massive long spur going out this way. Well, the reason for that is because I want to I want to move some of the um, some of the processes off my main out of my main factory. So all these all this smelting here, I want this, this to be off-site now rather than on, at the beginning of the factory. So I'm going to going to rebuild all of these smelting facilities somewhere else, probably out, out here somewhere. So we'll pull in the copper or the iron ore, it'll drop, get dropped off at one of these smelteries and then processed into the iron, the steel and the copper and then shipped back to the factory by train. I'm also going to do that with circuits, so the green circuits 
was actually the thing that sparked this off um, because where are green circuits? Green circuits are here. I copied and pasted the second one of these factories in and, and rotated this one as well to neaten it up. So this is now sort of tileable, as they say, as the as the saying, uh, as the expression is, uh, meaning that I can have I can take this chunk here. In fact, I can take I can take this chunk here and I can copy it like this and then I can paste it in here and I can paste them in repeatedly and oh dear I've just been hit by a <laughs> okay uh, my wall has just been hit by a this meteorite I'll um, have to go and fix that where is this okay that's not too bad because I don't think I'll get any attacks down here because they probably won't get through the gaps what was I saying yes so you can I can just copy and paste this chunk and make another factory and another factory and another factory to make as many green circuits as I want however as the astute among you will have already noticed I've run out of space because there's never enough space in Factorio and I don't really want to have to build a second green circuit factory somewhere else. Red circuits aren't too bad because I left a decent amount of room for them so I could put, put I could have that come up to about here and then go back down the other side perhaps but much easier and much better would be just to move it to, to over here somewhere. That is going to mean a certain amount of combat of course and that is one of the re points of Factorio I suppose but in order to make the combat a bit easier I've now um, got on my on my bus I'm building rockets somewhere here it is with where all the explosives are so I've got um, I've got an assembly machine taking in the circuits the iron and the, the explosives and making rockets out of them um, it's a fairly slow process to be honest but it does seem to be just about fast enough in that whenever I come back to base going oh no I need more rockets there are some more rockets for me <laughs> So my technique for um, for taking out the biter bases is, is working quite effectively. What I've been doing is laying down a set of turrets in a row like that, or maybe on, on either side of the railway line, shoving ammunition in them all, and that gives me a safe point to run back to. And if I set that up just outside the point of the biter base where they will always attack it, then I only have to run about this far out out in front of them before I can pop some rockets off at whatever the nearest buildings are, so the worms or the or the uh, spawners, and then I can run back into cover again. So the worms do outrange the turrets, which means I can't just use the turrets because they get absolutely wrecked by the worms. But the rocket launcher does outrange them, so I can I can um, at least it outranges the small ones and the medium ones. And the larger ones, as long as I sort of run around a little bit as I'm popping off rockets, it seems to work reasonably well. <laughs> so with a combination of those two, the the, um, the turrets to get rid of all the biters when they swarm me, because there's no way I can do that with with my with the weapons I'm carrying, and then the rocket launcher to take out the actual buildings, for want of a better word, I can actually take on the biters reasonably effectively now. Um, a base this size would take me quite a long time to get through, I have to admit. Um, but one this sort of size, or even this size, I can rip through very, very quickly indeed. It's, it's. I'm not going to say it's not a challenge because you, it is. It's a little bit of a sort of a faff, and you have to make sure that you, um, you're careful and you run back out of the way and you don't get, um, and you don't get eaten, but and you don't and you don't burn your feet on the on the acid they spit, they spit at you if, if, if they uh, when they when they see you. So you're usually okay when you're out there because as long as you keep moving, they don't hit you. But if you then go out there again. It's rather too easy to step on the on the slime they've left behind and get your feet burned. So I try to avoid that. Um, because of that, I've had to make a load of these medikits, which meant I had to go fishing. And fishing is relatively relatively straightforward. You just stand next to a lake, look for the fish, and then try and grab them. Uh, this is, I have to admit, another area where uh, long reach or far reach, as it's now called, makes things a bit easier than it would otherwise be. So you can see the fish swimming around here. Fishing is a case of just mouse overing, holding down the right mouse button and pulling them out of the water. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be quite this easy. You should have to wait for them to come near the shore um, or send bots out to do it. Bots are quite good at fishing, but um, I'm doing it with, with far reach because I, uh, I, I, my patients just won't do it, deal with it, let me do anything else, basically. Um, I do remember seeing another type of armour mentioned. Um, as a sort of, it was meant to be a sort of before you got onto the proper power armor that can have actual shield units in it. Uh, I think that would might have been in the. Maybe I saw it in research. Yes, here we go. Adaptive armor. I should research. I should pick that up. Let's let's research that because if I put some of this on, then hopefully it'll. Well, it's a it'll it'll um, it's like the energy shields, but with slower regeneration. That's absolutely fine. I don't mind the regeneration being slow. I just want to have some regeneration, because with this mod pack, your health doesn't automatically regenerate like it does in vanilla, which is a bit of a faff. <laughs> 
So the bots are gradually bringing out more landfill to me because I dumped most of it in my um, in my file train. Um, oh yes, I need to get some more rail. That was a big reason I came down here. Um, I'll do that off camera though because you've, you've got an idea now of what uh, of what file does and how, how it works. There's no point in me uh, in me going into too much detail about that. Maybe I'll research the uh, the blueprint based file and oh, not research, but look into and learn myself the uh, blueprint based file. But to be honest, I don't think it, I don't think I really need it because I'm with my with my outposting self-contained outposts thing. I don't really need anything else along these rails apart from apart from regular signals, and it will do that just straight out of the um, out of the box. So I think it's probably it's probably okay to just carry on as as it is. Whether it's worth going all the way across this this um, lake out here, I don't know. We'll decide that later. Um, I, the other thing I need to do now, now that I've got the rail backbone out there, is, is go out and explore a bit of this area with the car, and then try and liberate, it, basically take out any biter nests that are going to be in the way of my um, my offsite smelting and my offsite uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Offsite circuit production. So there's a couple of other con things I've been considering for that. One is that I don't really want to have everything coal powered out there because it's it's a bit of a faff and I want to move away from that. So if I'm going to expand out and build my offsite smelting, then I want to start using the um, the electric furnaces. Uh, that's these ones. Um, they're a bit more expensive to make, as you can see. I need to I'm going to need to work out how to make heat shielding, but hopefully that's not too difficult. Uh, no, it's just stone, steel, and sulfur. That's that's manageable. So I'm going to need massive quantities of them. And that's going to be fairly expensive. I'm also going to need a lot of power generation in the um, for, for these. So I think it might be about time I considered going solar, uh, where solar panels though and accumulators. So that's 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 all stuff I've already got. So if I start building these up on mass uh, with the panels and the accumulators, and just make sure I get the right balance in order to keep everything running overnight. Then I think that should should work quite happily, and and it'll mean it'll it'll take away the uh, the requirement to be transporting coal out everywhere and I can start making those little um, radar outposts I was talking about in the previous episode. So yeah, electric furnaces which are going to use a lot of power and then a lot of solar which is going to produce that lot of power that they need and hopefully that'll bring things up to a point where I can just then be producing enough of the uh, enough of the raw materials that they can just be shipped out to wherever I need them. Come to think of it, I think I'm going to need to do bricks as well because in this pack only you can, you can make them out of wood or out of um, out of stone, but stone is made. Stone tablet is made from bricks. So yes, I'm going. I'm going to need a, a supply of bricks as well. So that's four off-site smelting facilities: one for steel, one for iron, one for copper, one for bricks. Okay, that's going to keep me busy for a while. <laughs> but never mind. That's what it's all about, eh? I'll uh, right. I'll go and get on with that, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.